Okay, folks, I'm going to start with the first question. Our questions are mainly focusing on the metric geometry, the ratio and proportion questions. But as you know, you have to know your grade 10 and your grade 11 geometry as well because they pop up as part of the problem. Okay, so I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to start reading on your screen. You can see the diagram that I've prepared based on this question. It says, first of all, that NPQR is a cyclic quad. Now, folks, this is how you approach your geometry riders. The moment you read something that is important, you stop and you go to your diagram. We've just read that we have a cyclic quad. So we have all our theorems that help us identify relationships in the diagram that's based on the fact that this is a cyclic quad. So one, let's quickly go through them. For us to be a cyclic quad, all four points have to be on the circle, which is the case. We also know that the exterior angle to a cyclic quad is equal to the opposite interior angle. Now, to have an exterior angle, you have to have a side that is produced, okay, which we don't have in this case. Then we also know that the angles that are subtended in the same segment. So let's look at RQ. RQ is a chord, or we can talk about the arc. But we know that the angles that that arc is subtending are equal in our diagram. Okay, so that looks like an, uh, a necessary theorem to recall to use in this diagram. The third one is that the opposite angles are supplementary. Okay, now we don't have any radii or, any radii or diameter here, so we don't have sizes of angles that we can deduce. So let's start. First of all, the only one that we can apply here is the fact that we have chords that subtend equal angles in the cyclic quad. So first of all, I'm going to mark off that angle R1 is equal to angle Q2. That is because NP subtends. Here, be careful now. I have an angle X over here, so I'm going to do one of these over there. That angle X is subtended by the chord PQ, which also subtends R2. So this angle over here is also an X. And then just for a matter of interest, they gave us that one as X in the diagram as well. So we have three angles that are equal to X. Okay, let's look at the chord NR. NR subtends P1 and it also subtends Q1. So I'm going to do a little bit of a wobble there to represent that relationship so that we know that those two angles are indeed equal to one another. The last angle which we haven't marked is the angles that are subtended by RQ. This is the angle here at P2. I'm going to make it a two-liner and that angle is equal to this complete angle over there. Follow the fingers here, folks. Here's RQ, there's the full angle, here is RQ, there's the full angle over there. So just by reading that we had a cyclic quad, we could establish relationships between four pairs of angles. So basically eight angles on our diagram. Okay, let's read on. They now tell us that S over here is a point on the chord PR. Now, I just want to stand still for one second there, folks. If they, that, to tell you that you're working with a chord PR is indirectly telling you that that line is straight, that that is a straight line. Why is that important? Let's look at the diagram. It is important because on this line, you have this as an exterior angle to that triangle, and you have this angle here as an exterior angle to this triangle over there. And to be able to say it's an exterior angle, the line had to be a straight line. 
So they had to tell us that information. Sometimes when I was doing geometry at school and I would read that, I would think, do they think I'm blind? I can see this. But it's important. You may not assume things in geometry matrix. You cannot assume anything. You've got to read it. And that is why that bit of information was important. Okay, then they say N and S are joined. So point N is joined with point S. So that's a line that lies in the diagram. And then finally they tell us that R N S, this little angle here, is equal to P N Q. They both equal to X. Okay, so that's pretty clear from our diagram. The first question that they ask us is to prove that NSR here yeah, is similar to NPQ. Now let's just locate them. NSR is this little triangle over there. We want that. Let me just get rid of that one mark. NSR is similar to NPQ, the big one over there. Now folks, I'm just going to select everything that's on my diagram and I'm going to tell the computer to group it for me so that I do not lose anything that I've put on this diagram so far. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just to make it and I suggest you do this in an exam. Get a highlighter out and highlight the triangle that you have to work with that you are going to work with in your diagram. And my pen doesn't want to do that with me now. So yeah, just remember that suggestion. Oh, there we go. Took a little bit of its time. Um, this is the one triangle. And I'm proving that that triangle, NPQ, is indeed similar to NSR down here. Now let's just have a look. What do we have so far from what we've read in the question? We know that to prove two triangles similar, we need to prove them equiangular in this case. Or we need to prove their sides are in proportion. Okay, but in this case, there's more angles that are equal. We've got nothing on the sides. So let's have a look. The first thing that I want to see here or that I want to talk to is the fact that we've already got these two angles in the two triangles equal to one another. Folks, now they don't look equal. If you look at the diagram, they, they don't look equal at all. I'm trying to get my pen back. So let me see if this will do what I want to do. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I've got in this first triangle, triangle NSR, I've got angle R1 that is equal to angle Q2 in the second triangle. Now that is because there's angles in, and I'm going to abbreviate this because I do not have space, angles in the same segment that are indeed equal to one another. They're both subtended by NP. Then I also have that this angle here, angle PNQ, so angle PNQ, in the second triangle, that's why I'm writing it there, is equal to angle RNS in the first triangle. And this is given to us. They gave that to us from the word go. They told us those two are equal. Now, folks, that's your job done. The moment you're working in a triangle and you've got two of the three angles the same, the third one is automatically the same. Why is that so? The angles add up to 180. So we can conclude the following. Now remember the order is important. NS, NRS, I'm going to say triangle N, yeah, then R, and then the third one that I didn't use is similar to triangle NQ, first of all. And then the third one that we didn't use is P. Our reason, they are equiangular. Okay, so that was easy. That was for a good three marks. You had to state why the two angles are the same with their reasoning and then conclude by equiangularity that they are similar. 
The second one is just as straightforward. So let's not waste time. Let me write it on here. They want us to prove. So this is what we had to prove at the top there. Here we are required to prove the following. That triangle NQR is indeed similar to triangle NPS. Now let me see if the computer is going to do what I want it to do. I want to cut the highlighters that I've put on here. I'm not going to use the highlighters again, folks. It takes too long to load them, but you can see it helps you to visualize where you're supposed to focus on the diagram. Okay, now let's have a look. This is what we've got to prove. We want to prove that these two triangles are indeed similar. Now, NQR is the half over here. And then NPS, N... P, S is this triangle that lies almost in the middle of nowhere. Okay, now let's see. We already have in N, R, Q, we've got that angle Q1 is indeed equal. Now remember, we're working N, P, S is equal to P1. And that's again angles in the same segment. Folks, I'm saying again, I'm abbreviating because there's not much space for me to write out the full reason there. You write out the angles in the same segment are equal. Okay, you get a mark for that reason. Okay, now we're going to focus on the fact that we have this line given to us. Or we can look at that line, or we can look, we can look at this angle, or we can look at this angle. Now, if you look Carefully, folks, look at this. This is X. That runs across these two angles. This X runs across those two angles. The two X's are the same. This is the same angle. So I can immediately conclude that this combination there is the two-liner angle that the other two were. Okay, so not, not tricky but you have to look at where they overlap. They overlap at the same point. Your alternative could have been to say the following, that S2 over here is R1 plus X. Okay, now S2 over here is R1 plus X, but R1 plus R2 is also R1 plus X. So you spoiled for choice here. You could have argued that S2 is equal to this combination at the back. You've got two ways to move forward with this one. I'm going to move forward with the angle PNS um, in the smaller triangle. PNS, that angle, is equal to angle N, uh, RNQ. Okay, now folks, again, just look at this. That was X plus N1. This angle is X plus N1. So they both equal X plus angle N1. Therefore, they definitely equal. And we've got two similar triangles again. So let's just conclude that. That therefore, our triangle NQ and the angle I didn't use was R N. QR is indeed similar, now I'm going to need some space here, to triangle NPS. And the reason again, they are equiangular. The angle corresponding angles in those two triangles are indeed equal. Now for the difficult part. The last question, both of those were for three marks. The last one is for four marks. Now, folks, you've got to analyze this question carefully. I'm just going to start it here at the bottom. And this is the third part, third one. We're required to prove the following, that NR multiplied by PQ plus NP multiplied by QR is equal to N 
Q multiplied by PR. Let me just make sure. NR, PQ, NP, QR, NQPR. It is for four marks. What bothers you and what bothers me is where does that plus come from? Something had to be added to one another to form the plus. The plus just appeared in the middle of nowhere. Now we need to think about this. Let's look at what we have proved. We have, we're going to tick them off. We've got a NR over here. We have an NR up there. We have an NR down there. There's no NR here, no NR there. Okay, let's look at PQ. PQ, we've got a PQ over here. So possibly, no, it won't because they don't correspond. And there's no other PQ over here. Then we have an NP. There's an NP in that relationship. And there's an NP, the first and the last. So NP belongs to those two triangles, basically. Then QR, the only QR I see here is that one. Okay, and then we want NQ. Now, oh, there's an NQ there. There's an NQ over there. And then finally, we want PR. Now, PR does not appear in any one of those. So, big mystery. Where does the PR come from? So, that doesn't help us. Okay? We, can't, we can't just pull something out of mid-air and bring it into the problem. Okay, so I'm going to, if, they, if, that, if all those sides were included in that uh, proportion, the, that, uh, yeah, proportion that we're looking at, then I would have tried something else. So let's look at this. Let us focus in on this plus sign over there. Where could that possibly be coming from? Now, the only thing that I think where it could come from is from this side, PS, which was lying in that triangle, and this side, RS, which is lying in this one triangle, this little triangle over there. Why am I saying that? Because if I look at PR, I go PS plus SR. Now let's see if that takes us somewhere. Let's write that down. PR, ah, and there's the PR. I think we're on the right road. So PR will be PS plus SR. I mean, you don't have to give a reason. That was given to us. It's part of the given part where they told us S lies on the line segment PR. Okay, so what don't I need? Let's go and have a look. Do I need the PS? No, I don't. So I'm going to put a cross there. Do I need the SR? No, I don't. So I need to find out something with a PS in it and an SR in it so that I can isolate those two things and put it into that equation that I just wrote down. Let's go back to our proofs that we've had. Where is the PS's? There's a PS there that we did not, that we can use rather. Okay, so we're going to use the PS, we're going to use the NP, and if we use PS and NP, we must use QR and NQ. So let's just start. I'm not sure if this is taking us anywhere, but we're going to try. So let us go with the PS first. We're going to say that but PS over, so the short over this short over NP is corresponding to QR over QN. Now let's see if that's anything that's helpful. Yes, there's the QR, there's the QN, and there's the NP. I think we are on the right track. Okay, so what did we do? We zoomed in on the plus, 
and we went to the diagram and checked where does this plus happen in terms of the sides. And that's the only thing we could use. So let's go and zoom in on SR. SR is in the previous one. There's SR. Okay, I'm going to use SR. I must just make space here. SR over NR. SR over NR. Again, the first, the, the, the last two over this is the last two over NQ. So PQ over NQ. Now, folks, the reason for both of these sides are in proportion. It comes from my similarity. And I think I'm finished with what we've, what we've shown so far in our previous proof. So let's panel beat this to fit the actual answer. Okay, I'm going to get PS by itself. So PS here will be QR times by NP divided by QN. So it's just a manipulation here. And I want to get rid of SR because it's not part of the final uh, sentence at the top. So SR will be PQ times NR over QN or NQ. Okay, we can see those two are identical. Now, for the proof in the pudding. Okay, now we're going to plug those two in. So what is PR? PR, we're returning to this step over here. PR, or rather to this one, sorry, is equal to PS, which is QR times NP over QN plus SR, which is PQ times NR over QN. Now, folks, it still does not look like the original. The original had an NQ or a QN next to it. Well, look at where it's hiding. It's hiding in the denominator. All you need to do is now multiply both sides by uh, NQ or QN. So we have QN multiplied by PR is therefore equal to QR times NP. There it is, QR times NP. And plus PQ times NR. PQ multiplied by NR. And we've shown that quite successfully. Now, folks, you must always say to yourself in the metric geometry section, the proportion questions, as an examiner, I used to be an, a national examiner. As an examiner, we put little kinks in here just to throw you a little bit of track. So you must always ask yourself, what is the trick here? What did the examiner do to form that question? So particularly for this type of question, you must do as many of them as possible before you write your final so that you can see the type of tricks that you can pull out of the hat. It's not ever as easy as just proving two things are similar and then deducing from there. There is always a part of this question that's going to challenge you. It's called geometric reasoning. Okay.